Okay, Master was calling, so I had to answer. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, I mean, all that about drugs and alcohol and smoking weed and all that's pretty common sense, but at the same time, a lot of women and even men make exceptions because they're like, they're hot, I have the chemistry, you know, it could work out, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so that just, okay, fine. Um, but if you're, you know, a woman looking for a man, work ethic is very important. It doesn't mean he's already got to have a six figure job or something, or even be doing something that's, um, you know, uh, a white collar job or anything like that. They could be in trades. They could be, they could be working, you know, down at Foot Locker. But the main thing is what kind of work ethic do they have? And, you know, um, and I, I'm not trying to do the, like where Kevin Samuels, we, all the women would always say, but as long as he has ambition, but what I'm saying is that he has plans for himself. You know, he wants better for his life and, you know, whether that's becoming a manager, whether that's someday he wants to have his own store, uh, whether he wants to, you know, invest in stocks or, you know, I don't know, whatever, but that he works hard and he pays his stuff. That is important because he's going to be the breadwinner of the family. That's what you want. Um, you know, and again, if you don't have any children, you guys are together, no children. So you can work um, until you have kids. And really the goal is that you live below your means, whatever that means for you guys, and then save as much of your income as possible in the bank so that you build up a savings and when you have kids you'll have something that will be a cushion for you not working um it's definitely possible and uh i know it's hard out there today but the main thing is because women spend too much money i'm telling you women spend 80 percent of the money that's available to them um, of their household budgets so, and they spend all of their money. So there needs to be, you know, financial discipline. Um, you need to get it through your head that purses and shoes and nails and lashes and all these things are not important. You know, do as much as you can yourself. Um, have friends that do those kind of things that hook you up and you work together and all that kind of stuff. Um, but men like as much natural as possible anyway. But, um, you know, but don't spend frivolous amounts of money. Um, you know, when you're young and you're dating and all that, it's, it's normal for couples to want to spend money on each other to go do things. And, you know, they want to take vacations and uh, Disney and Hollywood studios and, you know, whatever other parks are around, you know, um, and you can make allowance for some of that, but you can't do it all the time. You've got to practice budgeting um, and being fiscally responsible um, so you know you got to take notice of that is the man someone who just spends spontaneously all the time I there are men I know that are more emotional spenders than their wives are which is rare but it happens and it causes problems so you know one one person's too um, what's the word uh, uh, not sympathetic, but, um, <sighs> what is the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, they're, they, <sighs> I'm mad. I can't think of it, but like, so it's Valentine's or, you know, and they know they don't have a lot of money, but they'll go get a necklace for their wife because they want her to feel special. And then she'll be mad. Cause she'll be like, we don't have money for that. Um, you know, so things like that. And I can't quite think of what the word is right now, but anyway, so, you know, there's balance. Once you've already married the person, now you just have to accept who they are, okay? So that's why um, it's important to figure out who this person is that you're attracted to, you know, what they're made of and, you know, pretty much where they're going in life, generally speaking. Um, so basically, if he's a good-willed man, you know, he, he's nice to you, but he doesn't kiss the ground you walk on that's good. You don't want someone pedestalizing you. Um, you're not going to like it. I'm telling you, you're not going to like it. 
Uh, you don't want anybody worshiping the ground you walk on, you know, acting like you can do no wrong. No, that's not going to work. Um, you want a man that treats you well, you know, treats you like a lady, treats you like a queen. However, he stands firm on whatever he needs to do. He doesn't change his plans or stop hanging out with his boys because now you guys are in a relationship, you know. He hangs on to the things that are important to him, his hobbies, he plays sports, he works out, he does whatever, and he doesn't change those things for you. That's important. You need a man that stays himself because if he changes for you, now he's a different man. You're not going to like him anymore. I'm just telling you. So don't look at it like, oh, he's an asshole, you know, um, or, you know, or he's too controlling because he wants to know where you're at. That's his job as a man. He's showing you that he has the leadership headship skills to uh, watch over you, make sure you're okay, um, care about your well-being, and all those kind of things that um, a man's supposed to do. So a lot of women act like that's called controlling. And honestly, yes, you're supposed to be controlled because women left on their own just see how they're doing. They're not doing well at all, okay? They're running a damn muck out here. Um, so, you know, yes, headship, authority. You want to see that he's not afraid to lay down the law and tell you what it is and whatnot, all right? So you're not always going to like his decisions, but it's better to have a man that will make those decisions than a man that's just like, whatever you want, honey, whatever you want, you know, because then women will push and push and push and push and push to the point they'll cheat on their man to see if they can finally get a reaction out of him because they believe he has to fight for their love, you know, and that is not the case. That's not how it works and you're going to ruin everything. So anyway, um, so like my husband, <laughs> my husband will say I'm the nicest asshole you've ever met, you know, and because uh, he treats people with respect, but he says it like it is. This is what it is, period. He doesn't care if it hurts your feelings. Um, he's not going to lie to make you feel better. And he's just going to say, this is what it is, you know, for me, for my family, whatever, um, and not care what anybody thinks. So that's the kind of guy that you need, you know, and when guys are younger, it, it often takes them, um, some time to build up their confidence. They get more confident as the years go on. Um, you know, like I've told you guys, my husband got more and more confident over the years. And in the beginning, uh, he felt like, you know, maybe I don't have the right to say, I don't want you to go to this conference or whatever, but he got it pretty quick. Like, you know, this is enough, you know? So anyway, but, um, just go with the flow of your man. Like once you've decided that's your man and, uh, you're his woman, then just put it all in, you know? And realize that when you have problems and you have challenges, um, it's like if you decide to leave that person, you're just going to trade him for someone else who may have more problems and more challenges, you know? So part of the issue is that women don't understand men. Men very often will stay with that woman that they've chosen um even if they're miserable because that's the woman they chose you know so but women will often leave obviously we know the statistics so um it's just important to realize nobody's perfect um the 80 20 rule you know 80 percent what you like 20 percent what you don't like is as perfect as you're gonna get in this world I've always told my husband, you know, baby, you're not Jesus. It's okay. <laughs> you know, um, I realized that my expectations, because he kept me in such a safe little bubble for 20 years, um, I never had the thought that he'd actually talk some trash to, you know, some chick or anything like that, just for kicks or whatever. You know, I just, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, most of you guys know my story. So, um, but as time has gone on, I've seen that men may have outlets for certain things, whether it might be uh, porn or TikTok or who knows, whatever things they may, 
you know, even write on a girl's page, oh, wow, you know, that's a beautiful picture or whatever, because they're just everywhere. They're everywhere. Instagram, they're all over the place. So, you know, back in the day, it was Playboy and Hustler magazines. I mean, come on. So it's basically the same thing amplified, all right? Now they can actually throw, throw a message out there, you know, even though they know that they're not going to actually get anywhere with it. Um, it's just kind of like a little outlet, a little thrill, a little whatever, you know, a little distraction. And women are like, oh, we wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. And you'd be mad if I did. And you're right. He would be mad if you did. Um, but women are different than men and we are not supposed to, um, you know, even have those desires. Uh, we are much more emotional and illogical with our behaviors and our actions. Um, and that's why it is better that we don't have male friends. Um, uh, we just really shouldn't, you know, um, especially somebody that you supposedly go hang out with or talk to on the phone and things like that is like a really bad idea. The majority of men, unless they're gay, <laughs> okay, uh, are friends with you still because they couldn't actually have you. So they'll settle with being friends with you. And if they could ever have you, they would. Okay. So that's the difference between the woman, how she feels about that friend versus how he feels. So, mm, you know, it's just one of those things. There are rare occasions that someone maybe grew up with somebody and they're like brother and sister, you know, not don't have a, that sexual compatibility or whatever. So anywho, um, I'm just saying that people got problems. Women, you got your own issues. When we get our cycle, my God have mercy. I've told my husband so many times, I don't know what's worse going through the cycle and the emotional ups and downs and our body feeling like someone's wringing the insides together and like just squeezing and like all kinds of horrible images that come in my mind uh, of what it feels like is going on in my body um, or you having to live with us, <laughs> not understanding the actual pain and grief and discomfort and uh, the whole process and the mental, emotional ups and downs of it all. You have to live with us. That is almost more torture in itself. So, you know, it's, it's rough. And women often are not fair when they have their cycle and things like that. Starting from a week before, it's like a whole freaking week out of every month where you just, you're just not even yourself. And that's so not cool. So, you know, um, we have got to keep limits on ourselves. We have to control ourselves and we have to be tracking and remind ourselves that when that time's coming, we cannot just let anything trigger us and then use our my hormones as an excuse to just go off on the man to throw things to act crazy to be ridiculous um you know to just make life miserable for him because you're miserable that's very wrong and you're really going to piss him off so um that's really important so you have your part to play too in order to keep the relationship good and keep it going. You know, everybody's responsible for their role that they play. And, um, you know, I would just say that women often don't want to say yes, because again, they're afraid that they could do better and they'll miss out, right? FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> you know, for the longest time, I didn't know what that meant. Um, anyway, so I have females I know. I talked to one this morning um, who's gotten engaged four times. And she actually sent one ring back and uh, kept the other rings. But anyway, and I said, listen, honey, you know, you're 42 years old. <laughs> you're still cute. I mean, she's got a cute little body, you know, very, she attracts men. And she's like, I, so many times I've had, you know, usually a little older men offer to just take care of me for the rest of my life. And I just, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, she wanted that D that's what she wanted and, uh, ended up with guys that were just trash. I'm sorry. They're trash. And, you know, so I said, sweetheart, all I can tell you is while you still got something, 
you should cash in your chips and settle down with one of these guys. And at this point, I would see a matchmaker and uh, she's like, matter of fact, one of my friends actually did and she matched with her husband and they're married now and he's a really good guy, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, there you go. You know, <laughs> especially as you get older, you're not going to find the movie star, you know, pretty woman story <laughs> where he's a CEO and the, you know, the tux and the suit and the limo and, you know, sweep you off your feet and all that kind of stuff. Um, you just need a good willed man. <laughs> he's not going to beat you, <laughs> you know, um, he's not going to, you know, be a chronic, uh, womanizer or something. Um, and he wants to stick with you through the good and the bad for the rest of your life. That's pretty much what you're looking for. It's like, we really need to be more realistic. Um, because we have these fantasies in our mind and even like with me asking my husband for domestic discipline spankings you know um I, even with that there's a lot of fantasy in my mind and the reality <laughs> is that we don't have control and we have to accept whatever however they want to do things and accept things for the way they are and appreciate them for the way they are. Because when we set up these ideas in our mind, we are then letting ourselves down and being disappointed and then feeling like maybe something's wrong with the relationship or whatever stupid things that we think. Um, when everything's totally fine, it's just we're all up in our heads with all these ideas that we have, overthinking everything and thinking that we have some kind of power to you know change things make them the way we want make him act the way we want we cannot whoever that man is that's who he is you chose him he chose you accept him love him support him and you just keep working on you okay i've found that the more you work on yourself he takes care of himself you know as far as whatever issues he might have that he's working on um and things come up and then they go away things come up and then they go away it's just life and there are seasons um and usually whatever that person battles with same thing like you you battle with something um it never actually goes away it just comes back later to test you again all right i gotta go bye guys